completely different way than the regular kings. The regular kings will be putting on or driving or riding on. Have you seen a king entering a, uh, on a donkey? No, the king will enter uh, on a horse. And all entering on a horse is a sign of conquering, a sign of power, a sign of great things that you can do in your life. But when the Lord entered Jerusalem, he entered on a donkey as a sign of humbleness. And if God is the king of peace, he rules or he reigns in, in the kingdom of, uh, in his kingdom through peace. And this will only happen through humility. How many times you lose your temper? How many times you, you, you uh, judge others? How many times you blame people are around you? How many times, uh, how dare they, I invited her on the wedding of my son and my daughter and my niece and, 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 and they never invited me. I'm not going to, to be in her place again and I'm not uh, attending this and I'm doing this and I'm not doing this and I'm, uh, how dare Abuna didn't tell me to do uh, this service in the church anymore. I'm not going to church and I'm not attending this church and I'm leaving the faith and how come and how come and how come? The more we are prideful, the more we lose. Also, he did not have that in heart. If you didn't get it, you, you got nothing throughout the day. If he is the king of peace, he rules. How, how he is ruling? How is he entering? He's entering through a humble way. If you want God to be the king of your life and bring peace in your life, in your families, in the church, it is only one way. It is only humility. There is no other way. You go and do yoga, do meditation, do your stuff. In the end, there is no peace because la salam qala Allah al-ashrar. There is no peace. You will have temporary peace. You will feel good after going to whatever uh, activities or gym or, or things that you are trying to help yourself with, which is I'm all for it. There is no problem about this. But the problem is if he is the king of peace, he only rules and he only gives you peace except or the only way through meekness. Sometimes if I asked you with a show of hands, don't raise your hands. Do you think that God is the king of your life? The majority of us will be saying, oh, he is the king of kings and he is the king of, of my life. But can you, if he is the king, then he is the owner. And if he is the owner, a guy went and uh, purchased a palace. And this palace was out, have 10 rooms in it. After closing escrow, everything is fine, everything is good. He took over the, the place, he started moving his furniture, bringing all the people. And after a couple of weeks, he realized that there is a room that is locked and he doesn't have the key for this room. So he called the, the agent and he told him, you know what, I, uh, I, got, I got this house and I have all of this uh, very nice place, but I don't have access to one of the rooms. Why this is happening? He told him, let me check. And they went into a big problem with the owner because the owner didn't want to give the keys of that room because this room had a very important stuff for him. To cut a long story short, when God, if God is the king, then he has all the keys to all the rooms. Search in your heart, and I, I bet you, search in your heart what is the, the room that you didn't give God the keys till now, and this will be the source of your misery, the source of your losing peace, the source of our destruction, because I'm telling him, you know what, uh, you are ruling over my life, you are the king of peace, you are the king of kings, but smallish, this room is not going to, you have no access. Maybe it is a bad relationship, maybe it is a bad addiction, maybe it is uh, unethical practice in business, maybe it is pride, maybe it is confession, maybe that I don't want to, to, to mention, maybe it is myself pride, maybe tons of stuff. But let me tell you something, the key is give God all, the keys of all the rooms and no place that he have no access, not even access, not uh, ownership to it. The time that you will 
keep holding fast to a key of a room, know that this room, it has a beloved sin, fiha khatiyah mahbuba. And this, where I'm telling God, you know what, yeah, I'm giving you all my life, but in this, uh, I, I'm not giving you access. And when God is having access, who is, the, who is doing the cleaning? All, when you are inviting people to your home, the first thing to, to say, oh, let me clean up the room, let me clean up this, then let me uh, work on, on cleaning uh, this stuff. But when God, you are inviting him, you don't clean anything. Ah, and I will, because he goes and he cleans everything on his own. You need a proof of this? In Covenant Thursday, Khamis al Ahd, when the Lord told St. Peter, I'm, I'm going to wash all your feet, and St. Peter said, you know what, you are not going to wash my feet. He told him, eh, you have no portion with me. If I didn't wash your feet, you have no portion. That's serious, yes. So Peter told him, let me go and wash my feet in the, in, in the restroom nearby, and I'll come back. Did Peter wash his feet before the Lord washed it? No. All what he did is what Peter, he consented. Sablorically, when you, when you are going to for surgery, you're like, ah, you know what, ah, the doctor is, is refusing to operate on you. Why? Ah, you didn't consent. Ah, Habib, ah, I will consent. When you consent, then you say, you know what, I'm giving the author, I'm moving my control from, from myself and I'm giving it to the surgeon and the surgeon is taking over. When you don't consent that God will clean your feet, then I'm telling him, I'm, not, I'm in control and I will clean it myself. And many times, many times, many times in us, in our spiritual life, that we keep fighting a sin, fighting a sin for years and years and years, not knowing that the most important thing is to consent and tell God, you know what, I'm helpless, it is not clean. All what the disciples did is they said, you know what, yeah, wash our feet. And if they are letting God to wash their feet, this means that their feet is clean or dirty. It is dirty. So I'm just going to give God the consent. God, if you want peace, peace is linked to humility. No humility, no peace. End of story. If you want to choose peace in your life, in your family, the more we humble ourselves, the more we blame ourselves. Think of this when they ask St. Macarius, what is the best thing to happen? What is, yani, tell us about something that, yani, that this is it. And St. Macarius said this, ليس أعظم من أن الإنسان يلقي بالملامة على نفسه في كل شيء. There is nothing greater. St. Macarius said, nothing greater, nothing is higher than this, that you will put the blame, that you will blame yourself for everything in your life. The more you blame yourself, there was a, a, a guy who refused to blame himself and to take blame on anything he did it just it is the the people it is the the the, the streets are are busy it is my teacher is very mean uh, abuna is uh, he ignored me uh, my wife didn't pay attention to the things that i uh, i asked for for uh, my husband my kids blaming everyone blaming everyone other than themselves you see the opposite happened with sam macarius himself when a lady attacked or accused St. Macarius falsely. And she said, you know what? The baby that I have in my uh, body that, that I'm pregnant with is from Macarius. And they asked her, Are, do you mean Macarius? St. Macarius the Great? She said, yes, yes. All the family went, they beat it St. Macarius harshly. And they left him between death and life. Do you know what St. Macarius did? He told himself this. Ya Maqara, he is calling himself Maqara. Ya Maqara, start working harder because now you have a woman and a baby to take care of. She couldn't deliver in the ninth month. She couldn't deliver. Four days, she is in severe pain. She screamed and she said, I lied. It is not Macarius, the, the saint or the great. It is another person who is named Macarius, but I just lied to get out of it. All the family ran, she delivered, all the family ran to St. Macarius to, eh, 
to apologize to him. And once he knew that they are coming, he left the whole area. Unbelievable. In marriage, everybody, the, the husband is blaming the wife, the wife is blaming the husband, the husband and the wife are blaming the kids, the kids are blaming their parents all day long. You think that with this setting there will be peace? Forget it. El Ab Yoga, 24 hours. 24 hours. Nothing is going to make a difference because we need to, in order, the equation is very, is very simple. He entered into Jerusalem as the king and he was the king of peace and it said very clearly in the gospel of St. Matthew Tell the daughter of Zion, behold, your king is coming to you lowly and sitting on a donkey, a colt, a fall of a donkey. He is the king of peace and he is coming humbly entering the, the city. And if God is the king of our life, then we need to give him all the keys of all the rooms. There is nothing that he doesn't have access. There is no website that he doesn't have access. There is no private uh, account on Instagram that he doesn't have access. There is nothing, whether your mom know about it, your wife know about it, he has it all. And this will appear in my repentance and my confession. I'm telling God, you know what, this is all what I have done. I'm not hiding anything from God. And by this, you will start having peace. So in order to have peace, you need to humble yourself because this is the model that the Lord is giving us today. In order to have peace, then you need to give access to God in all the rooms that you have. The last point that I want to share with you today is a story that uh, a lady, un not that much educated, maybe high school graduate, her husband is very, very famous businessman extremely successful, have a huge factory, businesses growing like never before. And the one who is uh, the, 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 the manager of the factory that is running the whole business for this businessman left, resigned, got a better job offer and left. And this very famous businessman was stuck and he said, you know what? Who shall I bring to take this position? Who can take this position? He called his wife and he told her, Malish, please, only one week. Give me just one week. Take over? She told him, I took over what? <laughs> I have nothing to do I'm to know about this business. It's very tough. You know the level of education that I have. You know my experience is almost not there. And I'm counting on you. You are the, mo the main the, the, the breadwinner. And the family told her, just please give me one week, one week. She started praying and she told him, okay, I know that you are in need. I will help you out in this, but, but I'm, not, I'm not responsible for what's going to happen. He told her, don't worry about it, no big deal. Before she goes the first day, she opened her Bible and she read Psalm 73. This is one of the most beautiful Psalms that you will ever uh, come across. Psalm 30, 73, in order to remember it, if they grew up hard with the letter of Sabine. In the time of uh, the war between uh, Egypt and Israel, it was in the year 73. And she read this verse. I was so foolish and ignorant. I must have seemed like a senseless animal to you. I am so foolish and ignorant. I must have seemed like a senseless animal to you. Yet I will belong to you you hold my hands and you guide me with your counsel, lead me to a glorious destiny. أنا بليد لا أعرف صرتك بهيمة عندك. والله رب أنا بهيمة. I'm like a senseless animal. This is what she said. I'm like a senseless animal in front of you. Yet I still belong to you. You hold my hand, my right hand. You guide me with your counsel, leading me to the glorious destiny. Business started booming, making unbelievable de decisions in business. She, the, the, he told her, can we add two more weeks? She's taking over one more year, two more years, three more years, 15 years. She is running the business and no one knows how this is happening. Then one day she had the fight with a, a worker 
And she started saying, you don't know what I did to this company? You don't know what I have achieved? You remember when I... And she started reciting all the achievements that she did. What happened to the business? <laughs> it went down. And she realized, and she said, oops, I forgot my promise that I promised God in Psalm 73 a long time back. I was a foolish and ignorant. I must have seemed like a senseless animal. When we are in front of God telling him this, God will tell you, you know what, I will lead. I will give you the peace. I will give you the success. I will know exactly. I will tell you what to do and what not to do. And here, when everything will work in a completely different setting. How many, how many very smart people, they didn't make it in life because of pride. Many, many, many. And how many people who are not that smart, okay, in the level of the, their IQ, but they uh, pleaded hardly with God and God intervened. I was in a, in a retreat and two youth came to me and asked me the same question. The first one is telling me, Abuna, I applied to this, I'm changing a little bit of, uh, of information, I applied to this medical school and uh, they called me and they are calling me for interview, please help, uh, yeah, pray for me, put my name on the altar, okay? Ah, oh, Habib, okay. I, I t I, when, when people are telling, telling me put my name on the altar, I take it serious, okay? I took his name. I put him on the prayer list. Two hours after, another guy is coming and telling me, Abuna, you can't believe I got an interview in this medical school, the same medical school that the first one. They don't know each other because it was Dice's retreat from different churches. <laughs> and he told me, Abuna, no way, no way, no way. If God did not put his hand, I will make it to this school. I will never make I know that I'm not that good. I know that uh, my GPA is not that high. I know that my MCAT scores are not that. Uh, but if God did not intervene, I will not be able to be. Can you please, please, please put my name on the altar and remember me in your prayers? I said, I'm not sure. I will. Two weeks later, I received a message from the guy who told me, the, 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 the low GPA, Abuna, a miracle happened, congratulate me, I got in. And I was very, very excited, very happy. So the first thing came to mind is, what about the, the first guy? I texted him, I told him, uh, what's up, how is everything going with the school application? He told me, no, Abuna, I got denial letter, I didn't get, get in. All the time, all the time, all the time. If you want God to back you up, you need to humble yourself. If you want success, you need to humble yourself. If you want to attain to the highest level that you can ever think in your life, you want to humble yourself and tell or say in your heart, I was a foolish and ignorant. I must have seemed like a senseless animal in front of you, but you are always with me. May God give us that we will make him the king in our hearts by giving him all the keys to all the rooms that we own. May God give us that we will feel his peace in our life by mirroring him and modeling him because there is no peace for us except we humble ourselves. And remember this very beautiful Psalm, Psalm 73, and always when you are stuck, by the way, uh, I mean, this is a confession, every time I'm stuck, and I pray the Psalm, Psalm 73, things work out with me. This is my personal uh, uh, experience. This is unbelievable uh, Psalm that I think uh, it has the key for all the, the divine intervention for God in our life by telling God, I was so foolish and ignorant, I must have seemed like a senseless animal, but this is not an end. Yet I still belong to you, I am your child. You hold my right hand, you guide me with your counsel, leading me to a glorious destiny, to whom is the glory forever and ever. Amen.